I've had the Steam Deck for the past few months, and I've absolutely loved it since I first got it. But one thing, surprisingly, that I haven't really spent any time doing on the Steam Deck is emulation. So I decided to dedicate some time to seeing how good the Steam Deck is for emulation. To have to say that it is a lot better than I thought. So here it finally is. This is what it is like using the Steam Deck for emulation. So should you do it as well? Well, let's dive right in. The Steam Deck has proven to be an absolute powerhouse for PC gaming, and plenty of people already talked about emulation on the Steam Deck, a task that is handled beautifully by this machine for the most part as well, but I really wanted to see it for myself, because if it can emulate PlayStation 3 just fine, which I think that, that it should be able to, considering the current specs, it's going to be a total blast to use for a lot of different games. Now I do want to point out that already I don't really love using a device that's this big for emulation, since it does seem a little bit overkill in my opinion. When it comes to emulation, I prefer to stick to something like my Odin Pro, but it couldn't emulate PlayStation 3 even if I tried, because it is much smaller and it is a lot easier to get my ROMs on there as well. So I do prefer other experiences over what the Steam Deck offers, admittedly. But with that said, let's talk about what I use in order to make all of this possible. I went with standalone emulators that I found on, on the Discover app within Linux. This is the easiest way of getting emulators on here as any other method was rather cumbersome. I prefer to use standalone emulators over RetroArch because standalone emulators are stronger performers for the most part than RetroArch cores typically are. So if I can take greater advantage of the performance on the Steam Deck, then I will absolutely take it. You can also use EmuDeck to put everything into one place where you can access it more easily and it will run from the emulators that you choose, but it makes everything just more streamlined. Now with that said, I'm not going to show you how to set everything up because it would take too long for this video and frankly, I'm not the person to make a tutorial for that kind of thing. There are plenty of other channels that have done a fantastic job at that already and I recommend that you go ahead and check them out. I actually struggled a lot to get the emulators to work properly as, as well as my ROMs so yeah I, I'm definitely just not the person to show you. Now with that said I'm ready to talk about game performance so let's begin with Dreamcast performance. Here I used the Flycast emulator and needless to say it actually ran pretty much perfectly. I played Sonic Adventure 2 and the Steam Deck absolutely crushed this game like it was nothing. It ran at full speed at all times and the game looked really nice too. I'm sure that there was some sort of upscaling going on here as well, and it definitely worked wonders. With most retro handhelds, where you would expect to see some slowdown, there was none to speak of, which probably isn't too impressive for a machine like the Steam Deck. So while it shouldn't be surprising that Dreamcast was this good, it still was a very pleasant experience, and I would absolutely recommend the Steam Deck if you want fantastic Dreamcast emulation. Now let's get into Nintendo Wii performance, which should ultimately also translate into how well it performs for GameCube. So I tested out a couple of Wii games, including games like Skyward Sword, Silent Hill, and Sonic Colors. All of these games ran fairly well and with very few issues to speak of. The only issues really came in the form of stutters, but these weren't too frequent to be honest. Sonic Colors, which is a very fast-paced game that looks great, runs pretty well on the Steam Deck, but in a game like this, there are still going to be some minor frame drops every now and then. These, however, were not distracting enough to mess with the gaming experience, so I didn't really mind them too much. I'm sure that there is a way of messing around with the settings to get better performance though, so I definitely encourage you to mess around with Dolphin. In terms of GameCube performance, you can pretty much expect the same kind of performance, if not even better. In something like Silent Hill, I did experience some more slowdown that was more significant, but with a game like this, you probably won't really want to play with your Steam Deck since it's made with the Wii's controller layout in mind, and the Steam Deck has a more standard layout. Some games like this one will give you issues because of this and you can still mess around with the control settings within Dolphin to best match the experience to your liking. However, I wouldn't play every single Wii game on the system because of these controller problems. But that's more of an issue with the Wii than it is with the Steam Deck, but overall performance is pretty good here. Next up is 3DS performance, and while I would normally want to test a Shin Megami Tensei game, I'm afraid that won't push the Steam Deck much at all, so I went with Kingdom Hearts 3D, which ran pretty well. Now, performance wasn't perfect here since I still came across some stutters every now and then, but it was so infrequent, and even when it did happen, it was so fast, barely got in the way of my gameplay at all. I'm certain that the Steam Deck will be able to handle just about any 3DS game just fine. However, just like 
with any system that isn't some kind of DS. I don't really enjoy playing 3DS games on a device like this because managing the bottom screen is annoying as it has to share real estate with the top screen. Not to mention that for any touch controls, it's uncomfortable to execute them whether you use the touch screen itself or the touchpad slash trackpad on the Steam Deck. It just isn't very feasible to me. So while I don't love playing DS and 3DS games on the Steam Deck, they all seem to run very well on this system. So if you don't mind the compromise that I mentioned, then you will enjoy playing 3DS games on the Steam Deck for sure. Next we have PSP through the PPSS PP emulator. Here I also tested out a few games such as The City of Final Fantasy and Naruto Ultimate Ninja Heroes 2. Performance here was perfect. PSP is also a fairly easy system to emulate, which is why we tend to see more or less playable performance from even more affordable retro handhelds. And the Steam Deck has no trouble running PSP games at much higher than 4X resolution. While I didn't test out God of War, I'm beyond confident that that game will run exceptional exceptionally well on this system when it comes to lower end systems like the DS, Dreamcast, PSP, PlayStation 1, and N64 and many more like these, you should expect nothing but the best performance from the Steam Deck. I pretty much only tested PSP to make that point. Next we have PlayStation 2 performance. I tested out a few different games using the PCSX2 emulator and guess what? Every game I tested ran perfectly without any issues to note whatsoever. Games like Dragon Ball Z, Budokai, Tenkaichi 3 ran really well while rendering an entire sandbox arena and I experienced zero slowdown at all times. Performance was just as good with Final Fantasy X and Kingdom Hearts 2, both of which ran really well. I'm also certain that there is some kind of upscaler here since everything looked really sharp. This is a really good PlayStation 2 emulator and it shows with how well these games run, even at higher resolution. Granted, these aren't necessarily the most demanding games on PlayStation 2, but these, to me, are some of the best games on PlayStation 2, so I really wanted to try these games out and they just about ran perfectly. So if you wanted the Steam Deck for PlayStation 2 emulation, then you got a fantastic system for exactly that. Highly recommend it. And lastly, let's talk about PlayStation 3 performance through the PCS3 emulator. I tested out Demon Souls and it was a rather big pain in the ass to set up. Apparently there are just quite the compatibility issues when it comes to different games in this emulator. From my understanding, so most games will require some sort of setup depending on your system. But once it's finally working, I have to say that I was kind of disappointed with the performance. Don't get me wrong, the game runs fine for the most part until you enter an open area. The game looks pretty good and it does appear to run at a pretty steady 30 FPS. The game is completely playable and still quite a bit of fun to play. The sound is also consistent so there aren't really any audio issues I can point out, but there are going to be some significant stutters that can take you out and this is especially going to be the case with massive frame dips when you start entering more open areas, which is going to happen every now and then in a game like Demon's Souls. The whole thing isn't just always going to be a straightforward path sometimes they're just going to be more open areas so that's going to bring down the frame rate significantly for Demon Souls. I wouldn't consider Demon Souls to be unplayable because if you really want to play it on the Steam Deck then you could get through the entire game I'm sure but it's important to note that not every game will play as well and some will probably not run at all but quite a lot of games should be totally playable on the Steam Deck with this emulator as is. So in conclusion, the Steam Deck is kind of annoying to set up for emulation. There's no doubt about that. There are some steps that you can take, however, to make this process more streamlined and that's always appreciated, but I did not really enjoy the experience of Linux uh, for getting everything that I needed to get started. Um, especially because when it came to transferring my ROMs, I had to go through a different kind of service where I would be able to transfer files wirelessly instead of just being able to take out the SD card and then plug it on, onto my PC and then just get my ROMs that way. So it was definitely a pain in the ass to set up. I also couldn't get the Switch emulator to work properly, so I didn't test out Nintendo Switch, but it is possible on the Steam Deck. But PlayStation 3 and below ran quite well if you wanted the Steam Deck for emulation then I can wholeheartedly recommend it, though there are going to be some limitations when it comes to PlayStation 3 and that kind of thing. Maybe don't place all, all of your bets on the Steam Deck when it comes to PlayStation 3 because you might be disappointed in that regard. Uh, this can easily run most games that most people want to emulate just fine, and for the mere starting price of $400, this is an absolute steal, even for emulation. Once everything is set up, you don't have to worry about it again, which is the beauty of emulation in general, but especially on the Steam Deck. If you haven't already, I encourage you to watch my initial review of the Steam Deck as I talk about how it performs in PC gaming by itself if you needed more convincing. But with that said, 
strongly recommend. So now, what other kinds of content would you like to see surrounding the Steam Deck? I'm actually thinking of making a review about the Steam Deck official doc when that comes out, but if you have other content in mind that you'd be interested in seeing, then I'd love to hear from you too. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end. I do very much appreciate it. Um, and I also wanted to say, uh, that I want to give very special thanks to all of the patrons, especially the tier threes, Omar. Uh, thank you so much for all of your support because it really does go a very long way. Um, now, please keep in mind that the Patreon will be shutting down at the end of this month, at, at the end of July. Um, so please don't support the Patreon anymore. But if you are uh, supporting it at the moment, thank you so much. And I do hope that you continue to enjoy the perks that come with being a Patreon until the end of this month. Also, please make sure to follow me on Instagram where I post every now and then and on Twitch where I do in fact have a schedule and you should follow me. Watch me play Elden Ring and not beat the final boss. But with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Until next time, enjoy.